Nah. Yo, Headliner Nation, it is Thursday, which means it is rankings day. And today, I'm going to be flying through my top 36 wide receivers, my top 18 tight ends. I'll throw a few extra wide receivers in there that may not have made the rankings for one reason or another. And we'll chat about all of it. And we'll get you ready to set your lineups for a very pivotal by Mageddon week 14 hit the like button for me subscribe if you're new here to the fantasy headliners and let's hop right into it ladies and gentlemen kicking it off at the wide receiver position justin jefferson going up against detroit this could end up being great for jefferson or will we see what we saw a lot earlier in the season don't forget that the last time the vikings and the lions played the lions held jefferson to two fantasy points and that was before they were actually playing well I don't think it will be the same here. I think we'll see a big game from Justin Jefferson. If they were to hold him down again, I would be absolutely shocked. But I don't know. Maybe that ceiling isn't as high as we thought. There's a little bit of Lions fan in me that's optimistic, but that's why I have him at wide receiver one, because I do feel like at the end of the day, we're going to be looking at a big week from Justin Jefferson. Tyreek Hill is going to be at number two going up for the Chargers. Now, one thing we need to keep an eye on is the status of Jalen Waddle and what that is going to look like a little bit, uh, a little bit later on in the week. He was banged up last week. Is he going to be 100% healthy? Is he going to be playing banged up this week? I'm in Ross St. Brown was inside my top five last week and he makes himself right back there again, going up against Minnesota. Minnesota just cannot stop the pass this season. They give up lots of big plays and one guy they're not going to be able to stop is my man, Amon Ra. Devontae Adams going up against the LA Rams. He's been on fire lately. The, the Las Vegas Raiders are playing a lot better right now than what they were previously in the season. Great combination of running the football, big playmaking, Devontae Adams. I mean, he's the guy. I mean, listen, he is the only guy making an impact in the passing game, and he is still putting up huge numbers. Jamar Chase going up against Cleveland. He looks to be good. He looks to be fully healthy. I think his ceiling is wide receiver five this week. DeAndre Hopkins, for me, comes in at wide receiver six. New England's been very good this season. However, they have been getting torched a little bit more lately. Are they starting to wear down? Hopkins and Brown could be in for a decent week. Stephon Diggs is going to take a little bit of a drop back to wide receiver seven for for me. One of the reasons for that is because the matchup against the New York Jets could end up being a tough one. I mean, Sauce Gardner and this secondary did a good job against Justin Jefferson. We saw about 70 yards or so and two and a one touchdown. I think we could end up seeing the same thing for Stefan Diggs. See him anywhere between 70 to 90 yards and a touchdown. And that's not bad. If you're a Stefan Diggs owner and you're upset that I don't have him in the top five wide receivers, there's no reason to be because it is a tough matchup and we still think he's going to be a wide receiver one we just want to be careful that that ceiling that you've been used to for so many games with digs just might not be here in this matchup christian kurt going up against tennessee a team that allows the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers got torn up by aj brown last week Devontae smith had a big game last week Christian Kirk likely going to have one as well. Garrett Wilson, they're going to be going up against Buffalo. Buffalo's defense against the pass, not nearly as intimidating as we've seen in the past. We're definitely seeing Garrett Wilson get a ton of targets. He's a top 10 option for me, especially any of you that play PPR or half PPR formats. Keenan Allen at number 10 going up against Miami. Expect to see a little bit of a shootout here on this one. Keenan, Keenan Allen, especially if there's no Mike Williams, who we'll talk about later. Definitely a lot of volume this week. T. Higgins going up against Cleveland. Got him inside the top 11 as well. Love his upside. I mean, him and Jamar Chase can absolutely coexist together. And this is a team that is playing well. C.D. Lamb. At number 12, Houston's defense is a little bit tougher, all right, in terms of uh, in terms of the secondary. No, I'm kidding you all. No, listen, they might be within the top five of fewest fantasy points allowed to wide receivers, but it's because teams run on them so freaking much. And one of the reasons why I've got CeeDee Lamb at wide receiver 12, I could honestly see Zeke and Pollard just running all over Houston this week. CeeDee Lamb, again, kind of a game like what we saw last week, 70 to 80 receiving yards and a touchdown that 
puts you in wide receiver one status. DK Metcalf going up against Carolina. Definitely a guy that has seen an increase in his production as of recent. He was seeing more targets than Tyler Lockett, but he's being outproduced by Tyler Lockett. That gap is closing. AJ Brown against the New York Jets. AJ Brown could end up going a little bit higher for me, but again, with New York, how, how healthy is that defense? So really for me, uh, A.J. Brown, kind of 14 right here, is kind of the floor for me. His ceiling, though, if if we end up having, again, issues with the health of the secondary in the New York uh, New York secondary, then we're looking about uh, probably right around wide receiver nine above Garrett Wilson is where I would end up going for him. I like his potential this week. Just where is that ceiling? I'm a little, I'm a little skeptical on where that could be this week, especially if Devontae Smith also has a pretty decent week. Zay Jones at number 15 against Tennessee is just getting absolutely decimated against the passing game right now. He's a great option as long as he gets the, the targets. Debo Samuel has made his way back up my rankings a little bit. I think Brock Purdy is going to be looking to him quite a bit against Tampa Bay. Dump that ball off. Let him do some work after the catch. I think that's where we see Debo this week. Jalen Waddle at 17. I'd like to have him a lot higher, but I don't know his injury status. Everything I've read, it sounds like he'll probably play this week, but I don't know how truly healthy he is. Tyler Lockett coming in at number 18, also against Carolina, just like DK Metcalf. His He's just got a wider range of outcomes than DK Metcalf does. That's why I've got him a little bit lower this week. Marquise Brown, again, going up against New England. New England has had a tougher time against the past last couple of weeks. Marquise Brown is back. That's a lot of speed on one side that you have to keep an eye on with a really good wide receiver on the other side in DeAndre Hopkins. Kyler Murray is set up very well right now. Chris Godwin at wide receiver 20 going up against San Francisco. Probably the best defense in all of football right now. This is going to be a tough matchup for him. This is about my ceiling, especially if he cannot find the end zone. Jerry Judy at number 21 going up against Kansas City. No Cortland Sutton. We know they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. Fourth most fantasy points allowed to wide receivers by Kansas City. Uh, Amari Cooper going up against Cincinnati is a much tougher matchup. That's why we've got him kind of as a low-end wide receiver two here. Scoring a touchdown is all it's about. Josh Palmer going up against Miami. He would be a little bit higher for me if we know for sure there is no Mike Williams. If Mike Williams doesn't play, he probably pops up to wide receiver 19 for me. Adam Thielen at number 24. Last time they played the Lions, he scored a touchdown. Really, why? Because they were just committing so much to stopping Justin Jefferson. Irv Smith and Adam Thielen were both able to find the end zone. Now, I'd go higher with Adam Thielen, but TJ Hawkinson, I think, is going to have a day as well. Mike Evans at wide receiver 25. I mean, he was wide receiver 29 for me last week, and I ended up being absolutely, I actually ended up being wrong about it because he was wide receiver 45 by the time the dust settled. Going to go back to him at wide receiver 25, going up against San Francisco. Just, just missed a couple of opportunities to be higher than wide receiver 45. Can we cash in on those opportunities this week? Demarcus Robinson, number 26, tons of targets last week. We know Tyler Huntley can play football. He did fine last year. Pittsburgh allows the second most fancy points to wide receivers. Sign me up for some Demarcus Robinson, even if the ceiling is not that high. Corey Davis against Buffalo. I mean, he is a guy, 10 targets last week. Mike White throwing it almost 60 times. Does he throw it the same amount of times against the Bills? Maybe not, but definitely could see at least 40. If that happens, Corey Davis will see a decent amount of targets. George Pickens against Baltimore. I, I would like to have him higher, but we just don't know what we're getting on a weekly basis from Pittsburgh. DJ Chark going up against Minnesota. Again, Minnesota has trouble against the pass. Big game DJ Chark. I mean, the guy can snap off huge plays out of nowhere. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a big touchdown from him this week. Deontay Johnson in PPR leagues, half PPR leagues, he's still seeing enough targets that if he catches them, he's going to be in this low-end wide receiver three area. That's why I've got him here again against Baltimore. Juju going up against Denver. Number one, very tough defense. Least amount of fantasy points allowed two wide receivers in the league. Number two, I just they spread the ball around so much. It's Travis Kelsey and then just whoever else can get open. How open will they be this week? Devontae Smith against the New York Giants. Just don't love, I've got him inside the top 36 because I think he's got an okay floor. I don't know if I love it. I would not be surprised if we just see Philly run it all over the place again. Matt Collins, or with Jacoby Myers, excuse me, at number 33 to, uh, to, to go with first. Jacoby Myers going up against Arizona. Really low ceiling this time of the year now. I mean, he's just not really scoring 
touchdowns or having huge games, but he's doing just enough that if he's a wide receiver three for you, you're returning value. Matt Collins looking for that touchdown this week. Tyler Boyd going up against Cleveland. I got to throw him in here just in case we do see, you know, a little bit of pepper between uh, between Joe Burrow and the wide receivers. No Hayden Hurst as well. I think that is a part of it. And we still don't know if Joe Mixon will play yet this week. And then Brandon Ayuk against Tampa Bay. I'd like to go with him higher. I just think he loses a lot of ceiling with Brock Purdy. And I don't know if he reaches any higher than where he is at here right now. I think he is the one guy that unfortunately will not benefit from this move to Purdy after the Jimmy G injury. Who are a few guys that are on the outside looking in? Mike Williams is one of them. Uh, Mike Williams, I don't even know if he's going to play this week, all right? But I've had questions the last couple of weeks about why I'm not including Mike Williams, who, again, hasn't played I, I, I'm under the impression that he still will not play this week. Last I read, he was a very limited participant in practice, and playing this week was still something that was yet to be determined. It is now Thursday. If he's still limited going into Friday, then at that point it makes us think he wouldn't be going this week against Miami. We'll just have to keep an eye on it. If you have him, though, probably not really risking it too much, especially with the way Josh Palmer has been playing. Isaiah McKenzie against the New York Jets and PPR leagues. He's really kind of an option here for me, but really only PPR leagues because I, I think he'll see the targets, but I don't know if there's a lot of upside against this defense. Darius Slayton against Philadelphia is a really tough matchup. He's going to give you 60 to 70 yards and four or five catches, and he's going to get you seven, eight, nine, ten fantasy points or something like that. Not a whole lot of ceiling for me. DJ Moore against Seattle. It's just too tough of a defense for me to really want to run him out there this week, unless I'm dealing with injuries and buys. Gabe Davis, I'm going to take him outside the top 36 this week. Tough matchup against New York. Those big plays, if they're not there, it really hampers his fantasy days. Brandon Cooks going up against Dallas. Did you see that Dallas defense last week? I'm not starting anybody from the Houston Texans. Michael Gallup coming off a two touchdown performance, still not making it inside my top 36. Again, probably running it a lot against Houston. Traylon Burks, will he clear concussion protocol in time as of this recording? He had not. So we'll put him here on the outside looking in and we'll monitor it to see if he clears before kickoff. Now let's talk about the tight ends real quick. Obviously, Travis Kelsey is at number one. We're going to put Mark Andrews at number two. I think there's going to be a big bounce back performance this week. TJ Hawkinson comes in at number three for me. Detroit's defense has played a whole lot better, but on the road against the against Detroit, the team that just traded you a few weeks ago, you don't think Minnesota is going to try and get Hawkinson into the end zone? You don't think Kirk Cousins is going to try to let him ball out to say, hey, Detroit, you made a mistake, especially trading him inside the division? Big day, big day for TJ Hawkinson. George Kittle is going to come in at number four. Again, I think Kittle and I think Debo Samuel with going to Brock Purdy is going to be the main beneficiaries here. Pat Fryermuth going up against Baltimore. He's got the upside of top five tight end every single week. He sees more than enough targets, and when he doesn't get the targets, it seems like he's making big plays. David Njoku, as of this recording, it has been announced that David Njoku plans to play this week. Going up against Cincinnati, I've got him at tight end six. Dalton Schultz at number seven going up against Houston. Again, I'd have him higher this week. But running the football. I mean, that's all I'm going to go back to. They're just going to run the football an awful lot. Hunter Henry going up against Arizona, the team that allows the second most fantasy points to opposing tight ends. Sign me up for a touchdown all day long with Hunter Henry. Greg Dulcich makes it in at number nine, knowing that we have no Cortland Sutton now. Very risky start, but going up against Kansas City, going to have to throw it. Dulcich should see enough targets. Evan Ingram going up against Tennessee, definitely has the upside of touchdown potential there. Gerald Everett against Miami. I don't know if the touchdown potential is there. Really, I think what we look at is he gets four to six targets. He gets you maybe 50 receiving yards, and if he doesn't score, he's a bust at the position. Foster Moreau going up against the LA Rams. Touch again, a lot of these guys we get down here with, it's how likely are they to score a touchdown? Really the same thing with Foster Moreau. Daniel Bellinger is back, a guy that I was really into before he got hurt. He is now back. And I've got him in at wide receiver 13. A decent performance last week. But I mean, hey, when you break your eye socket and then you come back the same season, it might take you a little bit to kind of get rolling again. Daniel Bellinger, not a ton of safety this week against Philadelphia, but he could very quickly become the number two target again for me in this offense. Chigi Oko from Tennessee going up against Jacksonville. We're not seeing the upside from him uh, as of yet, but he is a guy that we are keeping an eye on that down the stretch could help us in our fantasy lineups. Tyler Conklin going up against Buffalo. Uh, seven targets last week is most targets uh, or his second most targets since week four. So they were looking his way. 
But against the but against Buffalo, like how how much are we going to see Tyler Conklin actually produce this week? Kate Otten really touchdown dependent for me this week going up against San Francisco. Dawson Knox very touchdown dependent this week going up against the New York Jets. And Tyler Higby is getting so many targets that we have to throw him inside the top eighteen, but he just doesn't have that much of a ceiling right now, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it for my rankings this week. Hopefully, you all were able to get something from this. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new here to the channel. For you members, keep an eye out for those flex defensive special teams and kicker rankings coming out later on in the day. But I'm going to get out of here. All of you stay safe and healthy, and I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners. <laughs>